Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And there is now an installable version of Steam Deck OS onto our x86 PCs. So we're going to be testing it out on our UM700 mini forums PC. So let's get started. Now I'm going to leave all the links down in the description below to where you can get this ISO image and keep in mind it's in beta or alpha even where there are still a lot of bugs and there are still some things that are not supported but this is now an uh, installable version of Steam Deck OS for any desktop or laptop computers. Now I'm going to be installing it into the UM700 which is this mini forms PC and I do have a review for it and I'll leave it on the top right for you guys right over here. Now I did mention in that video that I'm also looking to build my own Steam Deck instead of a handheld but more of a, like a console and so far the mini PCs that I've tested this has come the closest. Meanwhile this isn't using the RNDA2 GPU like they use on the Steam Deck itself. This is all I got and it's actually still pretty powerful compared to the integrated GPUs we have. We're going to jump to installing this image but keep in mind this is still very beta and every time you need to reinstall this image you have to do a complete wipe so it's not just like keeping your game so if you don't mind downloading games constantly just to test the operating system out that's fine or you could actually check out my video right over here about Steam Cache and that will actually help save all your downloaded games into a NAS where you can later pull so you don't have to grab it from the internet. So now we're just gonna jump into the installation. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is have your USB plugged in, and while it's booting up, you wanna hit the delete key or whatever your boot menu is. I'm gonna jump into my boot menu, which is my UEFI partition two. So you have these options. You could choose the core Linux, but most of the time I would choose the Linux Neptune DRI. That's what I normally choose. Uh, it will drop you into a console, which means you have to type everything out. There's no GUI or anything, but it's fine. It's just short command. So we're jumping into that right now. Now be sure to have either Ethernet plugged in, or if you do need to set up Wi-Fi, we can set that up in a second. All right, now that it's booted up, if you want to set up Wi-Fi, you would do IWCTL. That's for the wireless controller, and that allows you to join your Wi-Fi network or anything. But if you do have network cable plugged in like I do, we could just jump into the hollow install. So hollow install. Now this will ask you if you want the bare bone desktop, which is Arch Linux, or you could jump right into the deck experience, deck per experience or whatever, a full Steam OS experience. So I'm gonna choose two. Now here you choose your, op uh, your hard drive you wanna install it into. Now SDA is my USB, so I'm gonna avoid that. So I'm gonna install it into my NVMe, which we will type NVMe 0N1. You don't have to do P1 because that's partition one, partition two. It's gonna wipe those out, so you just need to do the N1. After that, it's asking you, do you wanna you know, delete data? Yes. And it's gonna create the partition tables and everything it needs for the NVMe. And then it's gonna jump into the installing of the packages. Now, this part, you just hit okay and leave it for default as all. And this one I left as one, so you could just use one. Now the install is gonna take about 1,540 megabytes, so I'm gonna hit yes. Depending on your internet connection, this might take upwards to 10 minutes. Uh, I did this on Wi-Fi the first time and it took a while. This time is on Ethernet, so it's, I think it's gonna be much quicker. So give or take like five minutes, maybe less. All right, now that it's done, you can name your host name. So I'm gonna call this Mini Steam OS. There you go. For your root password, do not, you could do everything but the word echo. So I'm just gonna put in a password. Same thing for the username, instead of using root, I'm just gonna put Don, and then your password for that. I don't think there are any more questions after this. So when it's done, it should just drop back into the prompt, and you should just be able to reboot the machine and it'll boot right into your Steam OS. I believe that's how this part worked, I, I don't remember. I am actually gonna be using this controller right over here to control this guy. And I do have the screen being recorded. Now it's not the best resolution because this is actually made for 1200 by 800 or 1240 by 800, something like that. It's like a weird ultra widescreen resolution. So you do see some cropping on this screen. Now, even though I can move my mouse to the bottom, it still crops. Now I have other monitors that has different resolutions that actually fit. So I do have a few recordings of that. But for now, we're going to see this after you logged in, you have all your games and you can control it right through the controller itself. Uh, let me see if it's outputting the audio properly. 
So I could go into the menu, go into settings, and go into audio. Yeah, see? So I'm supposed to go into here and change it to the HDMI. This way you can now hear some audio coming. So there you go. What's cool is like when you go into Steam Deck and you go into your library, you can actually choose um, the games that only work with Steam Deck, which uh, you can select the filters on the bottom with X, verified only or verified and playable. And then it'll list the games that you can actually play in this. One thing I do miss on running this on a desktop is that I do not get the performance menu. Now the performance menu will only work if you have the battery indicator on the top right. And clicking that will slide out a new menu where you could actually do the FPS cap, um, FSR scaling, and brightness, all that bunch of stuff that I cannot get access to. So unless you guys know a way of how to pull that menu out without having to press that, uh, let me know down in the comments below because I really can't figure it out. The only thing that I think you can do is either A, we try to capture the key that it's being pressed for that menu button from a Steam Deck. This way we know the bit code so we could actually send it and can, you know program it in a way where we could actually turn it into a hotkey. Or two, I'm gonna do a little bit more research on is simulate a battery on a desktop so I could get that battery indicator so I could get the performance menu. That's gonna be coming out in another video if I do ever discover how to do that, which that is a search term in itself, you know, simulating battery. Anyway, on top of just playing this, I'm gonna show you a couple of games right now, which the first game I played was Ascent. And Ascent is a bigger game, 20 gigs download. It's a top view roguelike type game. And just think of it shooting with Diablo. And it works pretty decent on this. Even though I don't have that performance menu, I was still able to adjust some settings inside the regular options and get this to be very playable. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now the next game I test, which does not require much resources, is Cuphead, which is sort of like a side-scrolling shooter. And that worked very well. Now, I wasn't able to get some audio capture in this because there was something going on with my capture card at that time when I was filming it. But otherwise, it works very well because it's a low resource game. So yeah, Cuphead worked really well. Now, other than having to play just games on this, um, it is a full-fledged desktop, so if you want, you could actually go into the library, uh, I mean the menu key, hit power, and switch to desktop. Switching to desktop will actually give you Arch Linux with KDE. And I had to do this a few times. Sometimes I would drop into the desktop and then return to game mode, and it'll actually fix my resolution. So if you want to give that a try, that might work. But you can get the normal Steam right here, and it'll just run your Steam. Or you could return right back into gaming mode, or actually use this as a normal desktop. KDE is very pretty, especially if you're using it in this type of mode, like a desktop mode. It has all these uh, blur effects and yeah, I, I like using KDE, especially if it's on like Arch Linux Manjaro, it makes it look really good. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below or hit me up on Discord. Keep in mind, this is still very, very beta and updates are coming on the fly. So by the time I'm, you're watching this video, I bet you there's another update out already. So just keep that in mind when you're testing this. If you run into problems, maybe the next update would have fixed it already. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.